Well, I'm very glad Francis got my name right in the end. I am a girl. Women, good to have you here. I have the great privilege and a huge honor to be the vice chair of the UNISDR Scientific and Technical Advisory Group. We are very much into understanding risk. It's an essential. You see it all around you. Remember Canada only last week. A forest fire which required a most massive evacuation that even two people were killed in a road traffic accident escaping. Really frightening and really the world saw it. But think of Zika, a virus we've known about in the health community since 1947, but only beginning now to understand some of the dreadful congenital health impacts that are happening. Thank goodness the World Health Organization has come up with a plan. But the World Health Organization is also warning us that El Nino is not over. We have ahead of us floods, droughts, all sorts of problems like wildfires, and all the impacts that are going to be related, probably worse between November this year and April next, according to their current figures. So disasters happen all around us. Think about just the last 12 years, where we've had trillions of costs, billions affected, and millions hurt. And what we do know from what John was saying earlier, that climate change is happening, and that floods and probably strong storms are getting much worse, that we're beginning to document them better. We're beginning to identify that these issues are coming forward, and that we need to understand climate change and reducing and managing risks, which is all part of the disaster risk reduction assessments that we need to do throughout the work that we do in the communities with people locally to make sure we drive the answers forward. So 2015 for me and for the UN and for our member states was an absolutely magic year. We got the Sendai Framework, we got the Climate Change Agreement, and we got the SDGs. Wow, what an achievement. Now our real problem is implementation. So how did the Sendai Framework really happen? It happened in Japan at an incredible conference the Japanese ran, where we all got the messages about how we can deliver better systems. And after huge amounts of negotiation, lots of discussion, this framework was agreed on the night in March by 187 countries, ratified by the UN General Assembly in June last year. It is a framework that I think is extraordinary. It's a framework that talks about substantial reduction of disaster risk losses in lives, livelihoods, and health. And as a medical doctor, that health really matters to me. Because without health and well-being, we won't deliver all the things that we need to do for the economic, physical, social, cultural, and other values that we need to make sure we understand disaster risk properly. So this conference, this forum, Thank you, World Bank. Thank you, GFDRR, for helping us to get the understanding of disaster risk so much more clearly as a group, as all of us engaged, in order to be able to deliver the governance, the investing, the enhancing disaster preparedness for effective response, and that wonderful, again, Japanese word of build back better so that we really get the messages about what needs to be done. But underneath this is the scientist that I'm talking to you from. is this incredible mandate that the Sendai framework gave us to coordinate existing networks and scientific research institutions at all levels and in all regions with the support of the UNISDR Scientific and Technical Advisory Group. And we held, as a result, the first conference on this group in January this year on mobilizing science to implement the Sendai framework. Incredibly exciting, we have a work plan that will take us through to 2030 with the idea of science and technology partners, with roadmaps, with processes, with systems heading towards a global platform in 2017, which will happen every two years, we believe, as we move towards the delivery of the Sendai framework. Terribly difficult process, but the scientists are there because I'm a nerd, you have to see a scientific paper, very important to show that we are real scientists. We've published this on the results of the conference within two months in a peer review journal with 100 contributing authors. So to me, understanding disaster risk is essential for the implementation of the Sendai framework. Targeting the future with science and technology is critical. Building the partnerships, getting the engagement, sharing the knowledge, being involved to try and deliver a better future. So we have an incredible national speaker from Uganda, the minister who's going to be talking about what they do. We'll have Daniele who will talk from the European community about the hugely exciting developments there. And we'll have a young scientist engaged, Alistair, who will be talking about how we do modeling. 
so that it's to get every age, every group involved. So come and join us on Friday, 9 o'clock 10 to 10.30 in the Cape Town room, which is two rooms down. Be there. Thank you.